Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the podcast The Endurance of Labor Laws. I'm your lovely host Leslie Sullivan. Today is episode 154 and today is going to be part 1 of looking at critical race theory. So this is what is taking place in our schools from what I understand. This is taking place and being taught in public schools. I'm not aware that it's being taught in private schools. I just don't know. I haven't heard back from parents on that. But we are going to discuss this and this is kind of a detailed I would say this is probably going to be about four or five parts if I had to guess to really dive in deeper to critical race theory. So this episode, this first episode is just going to be kind of an open introduction to critical race theory and then the other episodes are going to be way more detailed. We're going to drill in to the specifics of this because it is an issue that is taking place in the United States. But before we get started, let me go ahead and give a big shout out to my listeners because as usual, you guys are awesome. So a big shout out to Oklahoma, Virginia, California, Pennsylvania in terms of countries, the United States, Canada, and the Russian Federation. So critical race theory from what I gathered online and from what I could figure out because it's kind of vague where it came from, but critical race theory in general supposedly was started in the 1970s and 80s. If I had to guess, it was actually started in the 1960s because it's not like one definitive person thought of it, which is what is really odd about critical race theory. Usually whenever we are discussing theories, you know, like in terms of like science or math or, you know, medicine or something, there's usually one person that is associated with thinking of something very specific and then doing research and development on that issue or that topic or that medical discovery so to speak there is not a single professor or one name that is directly linked to when the actual first day was when someone thought of this you know it's not like albert einstein or anything like that it's just a very vague history which is really odd to me because i think that if you're going to be teaching a theory you would want to know who was the first person to think of this like who got to thinking this way you know who thought that hey we need to look into this and who published a paper like who was the first one to publish a paper and really start the ball rolling and things like that i can't find anything that is super definitive it's bizarre and i find that really really weird and what's really disturbing about that to me is that we don't have a definitive of when this was exactly thought of and by whom but yet it's just being supposedly widely accepted and it's not being widely accepted although the liberal left and the progressives would like basically the entire planet but specifically the United States to just believe that critical race theory is the be all and end all and it's appropriate and it's what we should be te teaching our children and we should not be teaching them this because you know what's really weird is why would you teach your kids something that you don't know where it came from it makes no sense to me like where is the historical value and vagueness it makes no sense so from what i could tell and from what i could read about this It's basically these scholars, these elitists at these universities, but yet it doesn't tell me who specifically thought of it, who wrote about it and from what university. But needless to say, they make it seem like there was just a bunch of people that were concerned about racism and discrimination so they came up with this theory. Well, I would think that if someone thought this up that they would want to get credit for it because you should get credit for your work, but I can't find anyone linked to this. But needless to say, they they say in this article that it was it really came about, I guess, in the 70s or 80s or picked up speed by then. But I personally think that it came about in the 1960s, because in the 1960s that's when we had the sexual revolution, and then that's also when feminism got started. I think feminism was already brewing in the 1950s because the 1950s were this um, it was basically an era in the United States. where it was a very false way of living and i don't mean that negatively towards our country not by any means but whenever people think of the 1950s or they see images from the 1950s it's always a smiling beautiful wife in heels with beautiful makeup um her hair is always done she's always in the kitchen wearing a fluffy apron 
and she's never at a job, she's never earning a living and she's always waiting on her husband and then they've always got these two perfect kids, right? Well, that that is not what happened to the majority of the population in the 1950s. So, I know it's an ad and everything, but just the general perception of the 1950s is what is called the nuclear family. The nuclear family from the 1950s was considered one man, one woman getting married and they have like two kids. That was considered like the perfect suburbia middle class family, even though the majority of people did not have that kind of lifestyle. Now we did have a lot of soldiers come back uh from World War II when it was over and they got married and started families but there were some people that had like 12 kids and maybe they lived on a farm so but there's just this false perception of what the 1950s were as opposed to what actually happened if you want an example of this just look at the show leave it to beaver you have June Cleaver and Ward Cleaver that they had these two sons of course they're perfect for the most part and it's all about how to raise sons it's like do you really think people raise their sons like that no they did not because what's interesting is that the kids that grew up in the 1950s they're the ones that started the sexual revolution in the 1960s So basically you've got these baby boomers that started the sexual revolution in the 1960s and then it really got really bad in the 1970s. So my point is this, feminism it really kind of had its roots in the 1950s because there were many women that did not like just being viewed as a sex object or hey my my only purpose in life is to pop out kids and be in the kitchen. Because not every woman thought that way. But yet a lot of women they were encouraged to think that way and they were encouraged to have that kind of lifestyle. So here's the thing, if you look at the demographics of how many women actually went to school, you know, from the 1950s compared to now, we have way more young women going to school now more than ever. But that doesn't mean that women way back in the day didn't want to go to school. So I'll give you an example. You know, it was very few and far between for women to go to college back in the 1930s, but they did. And there were some women that were scientists and researchers. But here's the thing, there were many families that did not want their daughters going to school. Because they they thought that their place was in the home, even though they have a brain, they're literate. And what people forget is that way, way, way back in the day, like hundreds of years ago, women were not allowed to learn how to read they were purposely kept ignorant and illiterate and what really saddens me is that if women had been taught how to read and write just like men women could have been liberated from so much oppression hundreds of years ago as opposed to putting it off putting it off and just oppressing them and suppressing them So it's one of those things that you you kind of have to look at history with the whole big picture. You can't just cherry pick and say, "Oh, the 1950s were all good, the middle class was growing." Well, you also can't look at it from the extreme point of view of, "Oh, well, the 1950s were all bad because most women were in the kitchen and they didn't want to be there." It, you know, they were all being suppressed. That's not true. It was very common for women to not be encouraged to have careers and go to school, but it wasn't it wasn't all or nothing. It wasn't 100%. If you want an example of this, you know, there are very many um there are quite a few women I should say that actually started their own companies. One of them is Estee Lauder and another one is Merle Norman. If I remember correctly, Merle Norman, she started her cosmetic firm I think in the 1930s, and I don't remember when Estee Lauder started her company. But in case you don't know who Estee Lauder is, yes, it is the makeup brand that you know. It's really interesting these women did what very few people were willing to do. And I say people, not women, because yes, men had more rights back then, especially in terms of employment, but not every man knew that he could have his own company. And had, you know, and the desires of his heart could actually come to pass. Cuz it really does matter what are your children being taught. Hence that's why critical race theory is not helping our children it is hindering them it's like we're going back in time 
you know, to basically suppress a group that we that we don't like or that we don't agree with. Well, here's the thing. I can't think of a specific group just in general that I don't like. I can think of individual people that I don't agree with and that I don't like, you know, for whatever reason. Now, because of my faith, I'm not allowed to hate anybody, and I've learned over the years not to hate people because it's a waste of time and energy. So instead of hating people, you pray for them. And I know that there might be people listening that are not Christian, but here's the thing. Why waste your energy on people that don't care whether you live or die? That's the thing. That's what I learned about not letting stuff go, if that makes sense. I'm not saying holding a grudge. I'm just saying that sometimes we get into a bad habit of holding on to pain and then it becomes bitterness and then it turns into hate and then it turns into a grudge. That is what is happening in critical race theory. Because it is rooted in hate. It is rooted in bitterness. Critical race theory toots its horn that basically all racism, all oppression is coming from white people. And I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. Like I was researching this and I thought, okay, surely I can find something good about critical race theory. I can't find a single good thing about it. And believe me, folks, I tried. I always try and look at things from black and white, yes and no. I always try and see the other side of things, but I can't see anything good about this. And here's the thing, what really shocks me about critical race theory, I'm surprised, well, I should put it this way. There are so many things that shock me about this, but then again, I shouldn't be shocked because it's the liberal left. It's the progressives. Like nothing good comes out of liberalism. Nothing good and true comes out of progressivism. It almost always lies, but claiming to be defending somebody but really it's just wanting permission to legally suppress somebody else and to, and to make somebody else's life a living hell. First of all that's not the American way. It goes against our state and federal laws and also it's not the Christian way of living a good life. Cuz we're not supposed to treat other people like that. But what's interesting about critical race theory among other things is I'm surprised that this is being taught to children because theories that are this in depth and so bizarre and so progressive usually stay at liberal progressive colleges like universities you know kind of like the elitist you know what i mean like usually these people that think of these stupid theories they think that they're smarter than everybody else and that's what makes them an elitist and so they think that we're all morons and that we need to be shepherded by them because we're so stupid we can't figure out when we're being suppressed or when we are suppressing somebody else or when someone's being racist toward it, towards us or when we are being racist towards somebody else like they literally think we are that stupid theories like this used to never leave college campuses especially ones that are this progressive and this bizarre unfortunately our children are being taught very bizarre bitter hateful theories in regards to how to treat other people And this particular theory, CRT, it predominantly, I shouldn't say predominantly, it only targets white people. It claims that basically all the problems with racism and discrimination comes from the white people of any population, especially in the United States. And and they claim that it's white people that are oppressing people of color. And I'm going, "Okay. Obviously, they don't know that that white is a color." White people are not transparent. Like if if you were to ever meet me and see me, you would not be able to see through me. Like I'm not clear, I'm not um uh, made out of plastic. I'm a human being and I do have color to my skin. So technically, every single person on the face of this earth is a person of color. It's just there are different degrees of how dark or light someone's skin is. What's also interesting is that critical race theory targets white people and here's the thing white people are not just one race they make it seem like black people and people of color are only one race but even that is not true but yet they put them all in in one kind of big melting pot and uh, melting pot excuse me of describing this demographic and i find that to be insulting because 
you know, there are different types of black people. You know, you know, there's people from Africa, South Africa, you know, Nigeria, I mean, Jamaica. I mean, there, there's all these different shades of black, which is probably why they say people of color. But then again, what they don't understand is that every single person on the face of this earth has color to their skin. So technically, the entire human race is a people of color. Critical race theory is only critical of one race, and that is anyone that is fair skinned. That's not right. And here's another stupid thing with this. They're shaming and blaming someone for the color of their skin, but yet critical race theory claims to try and eliminate blaming and shaming and oppression, but yet that is exactly what it is doing towards white people, towards anyone that is fair skinned. Well, you know what's interesting is that all white people are a mix. Being white is not a race. Although if you are to fill out, you know, basically a um, it's not a job application, but it's the federal form. I think it's a I-9 if I remember correctly. I haven't filled one out for a while, but it's whatever that so-called voluntary information is, which really it's not voluntary. Most of the time employers put pressure on you to fill out this form. So that way they can submit to the government are they hiring males or females you know in which type of people are they hiring from different um ethnicities what's interesting is that on that federal basically a type of employment form for businesses to have their employees fill out they list all these different ethnicities but when it comes to white people we're just white but yet they list african american eskimoan native american hispanic but white people Oh, we're we're not important enough to put our our heritage on there. See, cuz here's the thing, I've mentioned this before in times past. I actually got a 23 and me test done. And come to find out, I am not white. I am a mix of races, which I already knew that. Because there's not a country on the face of this earth that's called white. You're either American, British, Russian, whatever the case may be, but whenever people are filling out that job application or that I-9 form or whatever for the federal government, white people that is oppressive to us. That is reverse discrimination because the federal government is not even listing our heritage. So that basically says if you're white, your race doesn't matter, but all these other people do because their skin is darker than yours. That is reverse discrimination. And what I learned from my 23 and me test is that I'm actually Egyptian, Nigerian, French, Irish and British. I'm a mix of five races and those are just the ones that they can pinpoint. There's actually a couple couple of others that they can't pinpoint it yet. But yet the the different races that I am are not listed on these federal job forms. because I'm not dark enough. I'm not considered valuable because of my skin color. That is reverse discrimination. That is coming from our federal government. Now we're having to deal with CRT, critical race theory, and it blames all the problems of the world on white people. You know what that's like? This is how stupid I think this is. Blaming everything on white people, especially discrimination and racism, That's like you getting a wheelbarrow and you putting all your problems in the wheelbarrow and you walk down the street to your white neighbor's house, <clears throat> excuse me. You walk down to their house, let me get a drink of water. You walk down to their house and you just dump all your problems in their front yard. And then you shame and blame them and you say, "Oh, all these problems I have, they're all your fault." So I'm dumping them all on you. That's what critical race theory is doing. That's why they are shaming and blaming anyone that is fair skin, anyone that is white. Even though being white does not signify a specific race, it's just a color. That's why white people are also people of color. But if you're to say that, which I say it, some of these people get so irritated and so mad and they're like, "Well, how dare you say stuff like that?" It's like, "Well, how dare you discriminate against someone based on the color of their skin?" I mean, don't they know that that civil rights also apply to white people as well? 
Like the whole point of ending racism and banishing discrimination and working, you know, going towards a better society is so that you don't have racism of any kind and you don't have reverse discrimination of any kind. But if you allow that stuff to happen, then guess what? You have failed. What's the point of failing when you can succeed? The critical race theory it claims it's helping with the issue of racism and discrimination but it's not because it's not addressing the root of the problem. The root of the problem is not white people. The problem is with the individual. You know, I'll say this. Most of the racist people I've met over the years were black. They were African American. and they were unbelievably racist not just to whites but to other black people i was shocked i thought wow you obviously don't really care about your own people if you are discriminating and being hateful and horrible to your own kind to i mean to your own people that would be like me saying horrible hateful things to the french to the irish in this case to egyptians to nigerians i mean it's just it just doesn't make sense like why would you be horrible to your own people. And I'll give an example. Think about Chicago and the gun crimes they have up there. Chicago has some of the strictest gun laws in the country. But yet they have some of the worst and highest rates of violence, gun violence and murders. And it's because they have a lot of gangs. Their gangs are predominantly made up of young black men. I cannot think of any white gangs up there. But here's the thing, you have a lot of these young black men that want to be cool, they want power, so they know they can't get a gun legally because a lot of them are under age when they join these gangs. And so they have illegal weapons. Well, here's the thing, what is the point of passing gun legislation that makes it even more difficult for people that obey the law, excuse me, for people that obey the law to get a gun? Law-abiding citizens are not the problem. People who break the law are the problem. And people that break the law are the ones that are always going to get a weapon, whether they do it legally or illegally, and most of the time it is illegally. You know what's interesting about Chicago and some of these black gangs is one of the ways that they get initiated into their gang is they kill someone. Well, guess who they're killing? There was one summer, this was several years ago, It was every day on the news we were hearing about a child being shot to death like in their front yard in Chicago and these kids were black. So you have a black gang that is killing black children. If that's not hate, I don't know what is. If that's not discrimination, I don't know what is. If that's not racist against your own people, I don't know what is. But yet we have a theory a theory not proof but a theory called critical race theory that says oh all these problems are are the are the result of white people they're the problem well has anyone thought to think about just how many white people we have in the united states we outnumber every other race we just do that's not a bad thing but it's just you know are you really going to shame and blame the majority of the population of the United States just on some stupid theory that's based on lies, hate and bitterness and grudges you know what really disturbs me about these young guys i remember when i was 12 and 14 and when i was younger and it never dawned on me to get a gun and go shoot somebody just to be cool and to prove myself to my friends or something like that like it never dawned on me to ever even touch a gun. I mean, I knew my dad had a gun and it was to protect us, you know, to basically protect the family and whatnot, especially if there was like a home invasion, but I didn't even know where he kept it for the most part. I mean, the only time I saw it was when he was cleaning it, which was rare. And it's just it just never dawned on me to take a weapon and just go shoot somebody. And also I did not have friends that were weird like that. If you have to prove yourself that you're cool to someone to be their friend, 
That's not a friendship. That's not a friendship. But here's the thing. These young guys, most of them, they come from a broken home. They're usually being raised by a single mom. Nothing against a single mom. She's probably doing everything she can to keep her head above water and to help her children. But here's the thing. They don't have a good father figure in their life. Well, guess what? When young boys do not have a good father figure in their life or no father figure at all, they tend to grow up screwed up and they get into a lot of trouble. Hence, they join these gangs because the gang is their father. You know, the, the gang is teaching them how to be a man. So now we have these young guys that think they are a man by carrying a gun, walking all ghetto, talking all ghetto, don't ever pull their pants up, have a gun in their, their waistband or belt or whatever, and then they don't even shoot the gun right. They try and shoot like some stupid gangster on a TV show. They shoot the gun sideways, and then they wonder why they don't always hit their target. It's like, you moron, you don't even know how to operate a gun. Like, you're not a gangster, you're not a rapper, you, you are basically a thug. Stop killing people. But here's the thing, if you believe and go along with critical race theory, you will never call out these young black thugs in Chicago that are in these ghettos and that are in these gangs killing people, killing their own people. Instead, if you believe in critical race theory, if you believe in CRT, then you'll just blame all of their horrible actions on white people. And, and, you'll, and you'll say, oh, well, it's not their fault that, that they're killing people. It's actually white people that are doing that. Really? Why don't you read the police report? Come on, people. Wake up. The liberal left has slowly taken over our schools. I mean, I knew when I was in college, the liberal left couldn't wait to completely take over the universities because they were already taking it over just with their theology and the way they think, you know, you know way back in the day when I was in college. And we knew whenever we had a crazy liberal nutbag professor, and there were quite a few of them, it was actually rare to have a normal professor. It was rare to have one that was conservative, that was normal, that didn't try and push some weird agenda and twist the curriculum to you know to fit their way of thinking and it's like really like but see here here's the lie in all that these liberals that are at these universities they claim that they want people that they want young people to think for themselves that's not true they are indoctrinating them so it wasn't bad enough that they were indoctrinating kids at universities now they're doing this age 18 and lower especially at our public schools This is why parents are so mad about this, because their kids are being taught all this trash. They come home, they start saying this verbiage and this garbage that the teachers are teaching them, which a lot of these teachers, especially these young teachers that claim to love and care about kids, they're liberals. They're liberals, and they're usually in a very aggressive union that doesn't think they should have to go to work but yet get paid. Well, that's called stealing When you get paid to do work that you did not do and you collect that check, you're stealing. You're stealing from your employer, which in terms of the public school system, these teachers are stealing from, from taxpayers, which would be you and me. Like I, I remember a story a while ago. I think it was some teachers in Chicago or was it Seattle? It was one of these stupid liberal cities or whatever. These teachers went on strike. And they didn't even care that, that school was starting. So, you know, they obviously don't really care about the students because the students are not being educated because the teachers are not showing up to work. So here you have a lot of these teachers. Most of them are young, like in their 20s. They think they're the be-all and end-all. They think they're going to make a whole lot of money being a teacher. Here's the thing. Teacher salaries are not the same as a doctor or a lawyer. If you want to make a lot of money, that's great. Go out there and go get it. Go work for it. Go get a better job. If all you care about is money, hey, that's fine. But you have to apply to the right job. You are not going to get rich quick or get rich slow by working as a teacher. It's just not going to happen. It's just not. 
So then you have these teachers that don't show up, and then when they do show up, they're, they're teaching this garbage to our kids. And here's the thing. Most of the kids in these classes are white. And so then these white kids are going home. They've got this white guilt now. And their parents are like, what's going on? So then the kids start telling their parents what they're being taught. And they're like, oh, we're bad because we're white. And the parents are like, what? I don't even think so. What is this you're being taught? See, I think the parents have every right to be more involved in the curriculum. Because if they do not agree with what their children are being taught, I think they have every right to change that curriculum and pull their kids out of school. I think this is more and more why people are choosing to homeschool their children. I don't blame them. Like back in the day when I was a teeny bopper, if you were homeschooled, you were weird. I mean, it was, it was not cool to be homeschooled. COVID-19 changed that. And then now that you have the Department of Education that is very much for this liberal progressive culture being taught to our kids. I mean, it's, it's not uncool to be homeschooled anymore. In fact, it's very smart because at least the parents know, hey, you know, our kids are not being taught garbage. They're actually being taught the truth about the United States and how to be a good citizen of the United States. This is one reason why there have been YouTube videos about parents that have complained to school boards and to city councils about what is going on in their school systems. Because their tax dollars are paying for it. So I'm guessing these are public schools. And there was one video I saw, it was a while ago, the school board, it, it was like one of those um, committee hearings or something like that, and the parents have a right to show up and You ask a question or speak a concern. Well, the school board was cutting off these parents mid-sentence and would not let them speak. So isn't that interesting that a school board is violating their rights to freedom of speech? So then what do you think this school board and these administrators are teaching your children in school? They're teaching you, they're teaching your children that if they are white, They're the problem, and you don't have freedom of speech based on your race and also based on whether or not someone agrees with what you say. That is not freedom of speech. That's Marxism. That's communism. And guess what? A lot of this CRT theory is founded in Marxism, which a lot of teachers agree with and a lot of feminists agree with now because it's quote-unquote radical. A lot of these women... To me, a lot of them are stupid when they claim to be feminist and they're like, oh, you got to be radical to get something done. No, you don't. You do not have to be radical. Just be real. Just be normal. Just use your common sense. Like feminists used to be smart. They're not as bright as they used to be. I don't know what is going on, but here's the thing. Instead of focusing on women, now they're focusing on being radical, which is very similar to critical race theory. Why would you want to indoctrinate someone else's kids to being radical? The answer to that is because they want anarchists. No one wants to say it, but that's what it is. And these quote-unquote elitists, that are supposedly smarter than everybody else, they are using our public schools against the citizens. Because they're using public schools that teach little kids as a way to brainwash and indoctrinate them into something that they should not be taught. <coughs> Excuse me. So I very much feel sorry for these parents, and I pray for this, or about it, because... I think that would be very frustrating to be a parent and you know your child is not being taught the right stuff and it's screwing up their kids. It's screwing them up. I'll give an example of this. Hold on just a moment. Okay, so I'll close with this example. So here's the thing. Let's say you're a parent and you have several kids. Let's say you have three kids. Let's say one of your kids makes a new friend at school And over time, your kid starts saying weird things and gets meaner and meaner towards other kids. And so because you're a parent, you notice this change in your child. 
you notice that they're kind of acting strange and they they're getting more and more hateful. And they're targeting a group of people at school and they're saying basically hate speech. And you figure out that the new friend is basically is basically brainwashing your child. Because your child is around this other kid and this other kid has all these really weird ideas and is saying, "Hey, we should target this group of people because they're bad, they're wrong. You want to be cool, come with me kind of thing." That's what's happening with critical race theory. See, cuz here's the thing, these parents, they're they're being made to look like they're they're idiots in their country bumpkins because they don't want their children to be taught critical race theory, but actually the parents are smarter than the school boards. The parents are smarter than the city councils. The the parents are smarter than these university elitists because they don't want their children to be taught hate speech. They don't want them to be taught that that their skin color determines how people treat them. And that it's okay if they're mistreated because they're white. That's what critical race theory is teaching these young kids. So if a parent doesn't like or approve of who their child is hanging out with, they have every right to call that kid's parents and say, "Hey, I don't want your kid hanging out with my kid anymore. There's something going on. Our, you know, my kid's not getting into trouble. They're they're saying and doing really weird things. This is, you know, we are pumping the brake on this." And more than likely, what that other kid's parents will say, "Oh, well, our kid's not the problem. Your your kid's just ignorant." See, that's exactly what the supporters of CRT are basically saying to these parents that are fighting for their children. You're not cool. You're stupid. You're a country bumpkin. What do you know? Your kids are in public school. They're not in private school. What do you know? We are the educators. We are the administrators. We we are the ones that thought of this at these universities. You know, we are the elitist. What do you know? Go back home to your to your suburbia home. You don't tell us what to do. That is what is happening with critical race theory. These parents or anyone that stands up against critical race theory is falsely accused of being racist. They're falsely accused of practicing discrimination. And then they're also falsely accused of being ignorant, stupid, and hicks. I'm like, really? Is that the American way to talk to somebody like that? No, it's not. You know who these parents are? They're Americans, and they're not even the these crazy Americans that um, that the liberal left says that you know stole the election with Donald Trump or something. These are just regular, everyday Americans that are concerned for their children, the here and now, and in the future. They're, they're concerned what their children are being taught. A lot of these parents are business owners. And guess what? A lot of them are either middle class or have a lower income. I would imagine the majority of them are not the super rich. But yet the elitists, they look down on people that are in the middle class or have a lower income. Cuz they're like, "Oh, well, who are you to say anything? How much money do you make?" See, that's the liberal mindset and that's the progressive mindset. but that's not the american way. You know, based on our constitution here in the United States, it shouldn't matter what you make. If you're concerned about something, you have every right to speak up. And also it doesn't matter what your skin color is, you have every right to have an opinion and to speak up about stuff and also to protect your children. So you know what's inter- interesting about critical race theory is that it very much reminds me of how in France The French people are not happy with their government but yet they still keep voting in that Macaroon guy or whatever. So it's like if you don't like what's going on, then don't keep electing the same person. Like you have to change it, right? But anyway, in France, the government has a mandate and they've had this for a while now that if you give birth, your child has to go into daycare. It's forced daycare. Even if you are a stay-at-home mom and your husband makes a lot of money or maybe both you and your husband work, but you can have a relative babysit your kid. No, the 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 France or sorry, the French government forbids that. So France, that liberal government over there, it's very socialist. 
it basically thinks that your kids don't belong to you. They, they belong to the French government. And it's the French government that decides what happens to your child. That is what is going on with CRT and critical race theory. You have these elitists, okay, these quote-unquote administrators, which we have discussed in times past in previous episodes about just how bad the word administrator is because it's usually someone that thinks they are an elitist and they, they think they have a right to control every little thing about your life or a situation and they do not. But here's the thing. You have these elitists and these administrators They honestly think they know more than everybody else and that you're an idiot and a moron. And so because we're so stupid and we're such peasants, we need their help to make decisions about our lives. See, that's the arrogance of critical race theory. That, that, that's the, the entitlement kind of emotion that goes along with the liberal left and the progressives. They have this entitlement way of living. Oh, I'm entitled to do this, but you're not. See, that's not equality. You know, what's interesting is that CRT goes directly against the Constitution of the United States because it does not promote freedom. It does not promote equality. Why aren't the feminists speaking out against this? If anything, the feminists are for critical race theory. It's like, you know what? Feminists are supposed to be for women. They're not supposed to be for homosexuals. They're not supposed to be for transgenders. They're not supposed to be for racism. They're not supposed to be for discrimination. They're not supposed to be for brainwashing kids. See, this is what happens whenever you have a very bizarre and dangerous theory that starts out at these elitist colleges and is thought up by these elitist moron professors And then they, they push it on down through the system, down the pipeline, to just regular everyday public schools, and they're brainwashing kids. But yet kids, they're either not allowed to pray or they're not taught to pray, and they no longer say the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you rather your child be taught critical race theory, or would you rather your child learn how to say the Pledge of Allegiance? Like, which is a better outcome for your child in terms of citizenship, And, and, you know, basically civic duty of being a good citizen of your country. I think it's very clear. I think most people would want their kids to love their country and to, you know, even start simple with saying the Pledge of Allegiance at school. We used to do that every day when I was in grade school. Come middle school, we hardly ever said it. The only time we said it was maybe in our civic class. And that's really sad. And then by high school, we weren't saying it anymore. And, you know, that really disappointed me because I thought it really brought unity to our class. It really did. Just something as simple as the Pledge of Allegiance. It really made you proud of your country. And you wanted to do good for your community. But if kids are not taught to do good like that, if they're not taught to care... then guess what? They are going to end up like those black kids in those ghettos and those gangs up in Chicago where they just kill each other. And they kill other people's kids. See, this is why sometimes minors are prosecuted as adults because the offense was so horrific and graphic that they were perpetrating the crime as an adult, not a child, even though they were a minor when they committed the offense. You know, would you rather your child be raised appropriately or inappropriately? That's the thing. And it really does come down to how are our kids being trained and raised and what are they being taught? Because what you have to remember is that most kids are in school from like five to eight hours a day. Well, that's easily five to eight hours of brainwashing by some stupid teacher in their 20s that thinks it's their job to be a Marxist. but doesn't claim to be a Marxist necessarily, but yet they are, they are definitely pushing weird agendas onto kids. You know, I remember, I remember back in the day, every once in a while we would have a parent that either wasn't happy with what was going on in the classroom or maybe their kid was the problem. So the, the principal would give the parent of that child a chance to sit in on the classroom. So that way the kid would be embarrassed, first of all, it was usually boys, 
So that way the kid would be embarrassed that his mother was there or father, which was way worse. And that they had to sit there the entire day and watch their kid. But also there were some parents that showed up every once in a while because they wanted to know what their kids were being taught. I think more parents should do that. I think more parents should sit in on these classes at these public schools and know what is being taught to their children. They have every right to do that. Their tax dollars are paying for that. If anything, I think CRT is helping to wake parents up to the fact that you cannot trust the federal government in terms of raising your kids because it's not the the federal government's responsibility to raise your kids. It's the parents' responsibility to raise their children. That's why the federal government belongs to the people. That's why we are a democracy. That's why we are a republic. We do not report to elitist. Elitist report to us because we are the citizens of the United States. We are the taxpayers and we have voting rights. You know what's interesting about elitist is they think that illegal immigrants should have voting rights. Isn't that interesting? Like here they are shaming and blaming white people, but yet they think Ill- illegal Im- immigrants should have the right to vote. It's like you have to kid me like that's breaking the law. That's a federal law. And that's the law of the land. So here we have these elitists that are telling us what to do all the time. And yet they're okay with certain people breaking the law because they're okay with it. Well, here's the thing, the laws are not written so that you can just decide when it's okay to break them and when it is not okay to break them. You see, here's the thing. When you have laws, you have laws so that you have justice. But if you do not implement your laws, especially not with equality, then it's virtually impossible to get justice in any kind of court case, any kind of situation. So these elitists that are all for changing our laws and changing things like this, they don't even honor our laws. because they think they are above the law. That's why our kids are being taught critical race theory. And I'm glad these parents are standing up and throwing a fit because they need to. What's very interesting is that you know, elitist I have no doubt that they're married and have kids too, but yet they don't think that other people who have kids should have any right to speak up. That's elitism. You know, what's interesting about the liberal left and the progressives is that they claim to not be able to stand uh, colonialism or imperialism, but yet look at what they're doing. They're trying to control other people and other people's kids. They don't even believe in democracy, but yet they want the money. They want a high-paying job, they want the power, they want the control. That's why critical race theory as well as feminism is founded in Marxism. Let me rephrase that. Critical race theory is founded in Marxism. Feminism initially was not founded on Marxism. It was founded on freeing women from oppression, but not with the Marxist bent. Feminism has slowly become Marxist because it's gotten really radical. So I need to correct myself on that. But here's the thing. I don't think our kids should be taught anything that promotes Marxism, Leninism, communism or fascism or even socialism. Because socialism is just a it's just a teeny tiny step away. from marxism, communism and fascism. Socialism makes it seem it makes it seem like it really cares about people but it really doesn't. It's basically a lie because it is a lie. It says it cares about people but I mean just look at Trudeau. Look at what he's doing to his citizens. He's trying to pass a triple carbon tax that would increase taxes up there on anything carbon by tripling it. Tripling the tax. 
Do you have any idea how cold it gets in Canada? It's freezing cold. So Trudeau doesn't even care that his people are freezing. He doesn't care that they can't afford their utility bills. He just doesn't care. He's more concerned about quote the environment, global warming, carbon footprints, but at the sake of punishing his own citizens. Well, technically they're not his citizens, but because they don't worship him or anything like that. But I'm saying that he puts his agenda before doing what's right. That is exactly what critical race theory does. It puts an agenda before people, before doing what's right. But yet it claims to be helping people, but it does not. But that is it for today's podcast. I will go ahead and end it there and we will go ahead and dive in even deeper tomorrow. As I said, this is probably going to be four or five episodes because it's it's a pretty interesting topic. I didn't know so much was going on in our public schools. All I knew is that parents were very upset. And you know what? Sometimes it takes a lot to irritate parents, but once you irritate them, it takes a lot to calm them down. Because when they get offended, it it's about their kids, right? So it's like don't mess with other people's kids. So they have every right to speak up. So, but anyway, I will go ahead and end this podcast but as usual until next time. I pray that you're happy, healthy, sorry, happy, healthy, whole, talking too fast. I pray that you're happy, healthy and whole, that you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.